What's going on viewers? Welcome back to Cars with Ben. And in today's video, we are covering five cheap supercars you could own if you uh, saved up quite a bit. Not too much, but a little bit of cash just to get your first supercar as a starter. And I think it's a great video because it inspires people. Um, and thank you for the feedback on the last video. I think that people have been really enjoying them. So I'm going to carry on doing it. So let's jump straight in. Okay, number one, I've gone for the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. The reason for this is the Aston Martin V8 Vantage hasn't um, aged badly at all. I think it looks fantastic. So use prices for these. You're generally looking at around 30, 35, possibly 40 for a good one. Um, they have depreciated quite a lot since they were obviously the heart in half, but they still have quite a an appeal being an Aston Martin. And I think they look fantastic even today. Uh, it's just there's a lot more Aston Martins out there now. And of course, you can get this with the manual, which is even more amazing. And that 4.3 litre is so amazing. It just sounds incredible. Um, and the great thing about Aston Martin is you're going to get a fantastic build quality. So it is a bit more of a luxury supercar for the sort of elderly, elderly gentleman, shall I say. But I still think it's a great car for anyone um, because you could probably daily it if you wanted to. Not that you probably should because it will drink fuel like crazy. But yeah, generally speaking, you're looking at around 30, 35 grams with one of these, which is quite a lot, but don't forget it is used and you are getting a hell of a lot of car. Um, so this is more of the British side of things, but they have updated it over the time. So you probably want to look at around the 2007-ish model, um, maybe 2008 to keep prices low. But for a first supercar, I think this is a great start and everyone does love an Aston. You just can't go wrong. It, it looks great everywhere. So first number... Being number one, Aston Martin V8 Vantage. Moving on to number two, the Nissan GTR 2009 model. Um, so the Nissan GTR actually, to a lot, unbeknownst to a lot of people, is cheaper than people think. If you are lo looking for a GTR, obviously the newer models, which they are updating all the time, so the 2015 model and the 2019 model, are the most expensive being the newest but if you actually look for a higher mileage gtr i found prices for around 35 to 40k so obviously still quite a lot here but these prices are bear in mind you're getting a lot of car for that and i think everyone loves a gtr with the launch control specifically which is a bonus um of course with gtr you could daily it you've got the launch control you could take it to a track so it has got a lot of Purpose to this car, probably what the most usable car, supercar on here. I think the GTR it sort of blends in well with the, the daily, even though it is still, you know, it looks awesome on the road. And of course, there's quite a lot of them now, so that is why prices are coming down. Uh, in terms of mileage, you'll probably want to look at a, a, maybe a 30, 40,000 mile one, but that is still really low for a great car that you can use pretty much every day. Uh, GTRs probably do have high insurance, so, so do be aware of that because of the launch control. However, I think, you know, you've got the whole, even though it is 2009, it's still fantastic tech for the time. So that is something to bear in mind. I do really like the GTRs and it probably would be my top choice on here. So definitely consider that if you are in the in the market for a new, new sorry, used supercar, uh, first time used supercar. Another thing I actually really like about the GTRs, is that the wheels, the rims are massive. And you've got four seats. So if you ever wanted to put four people in it, you could. Um, but I'm sure people probably wouldn't want to. But number two, the Nissan GTR. Number three, the Porsche 911 2006. So again, you'll notice these models I've gone for are all 2006 to 2010, roughly. Uh, that is because the, these models have all decreased in value and depreciated quite a bit with the newer models being out. And I've gone for the Porsche 911 G GT, sorry, 2006 because this car is actually again a bit like the GTI more usable every day if you wanted to use it you could um, I think it's a great car in terms of its handling probably one of the best handling cars you can buy uh, even now this model in particular is probably well serviced by Porsche it's a, a 3.8 litre um, so you can get different models like you can see here I really like this one in black um, it wouldn't be my choice I've never personally had the 911, but not that I've had a supercar at all, but um, I'd rather have, you know, GTR. However, a lot of people do like the 911, and I can understand why it is a great sports slash supercar. Um, 
So this model here is the standard Carrera, but obviously you've got different options. Prices, you're probably looking at around 30, as low as 20K for some of these. So the cheapest one on this list by far. So just bearing that in mind if you are looking for your first supercar. Um, I think a fantastic choice and I don't have any, any issues with any of them. Brilliant cars. Um, obviously the engine in the back, so just bear that in mind. It's a very high service price for Porsches and to keep them running. Uh, but that probably goes about saying for all cars, uh, specifically with all, all the tyres on the supercar. Moving on to number four, the Audi R8 2008 model. So the Audi R8 2008 is um, from 2009 roughly to 2007 and 2009. They made this model, which is the uh, standard, not the V10. Um, but with this model, it has depreciated so much because it is the very first gen of the R8. Prices for the R8, you're looking at around 40-ish thousand to 50,000, as lowest of I, as I've seen, um, possibly lower depending on the mileage. But really for that, you are getting, it is probably more expensive than the majority. That being that the R8 is still a very popular car today and they only made sort of two or three gens at this point, unlike the 911 where they've made so many gens since. Um, with the R8 as, as well, you probably wouldn't want to use it daily. However, it is such a cool car and it does remind me of Iron Man. So that is something to be um, considered. It's probably the least usable car on here. However, I probably would pick this car because I love this one so much. And obviously this is all old German tech, so it probably wouldn't work as well in something like a 911. And number five, the BMW i8. This is a good one because I've decided to go a bit more quirkier and finish with an i8. Uh, the reason being is that if I'm sure everyone knows the i8, but it's easily forgettable as well. The i8 is a car that wasn't bought as much and it is sort of a semi-electric, I believe, car. I might be wrong in that. Comment, comment on below, down below if I am. Uh, the i8 is roughly, you're looking at about 30 to 40 grand. So again, uh, not the most expensive, but not the cheapest compared to the Porsche. However, you are getting a very unique car. It's very controversial styling though, because you have got people saying that it looks like a Porsche at the back. Um, so that is something to be aware of. However, I think this car is absolutely brilliant. It looks, uh, it does look different, but it still stands out on the road. And of course you've got the four seats, so it is somewhat practical, but still considered a supercar. Um, personally, I'd have this over the Porsche 911 just because it's more interesting and it's very futuristic. So I think it will in interest people who are into their tech and uh, technology in terms of fu futurism and in why in particular this car looks great. So in terms of this being sort of all five supercars, I think you've got a good choice of selection, all roughly from around 20 to 40k to play with. But in you know you are getting a supercar for that money, so even though it is a lot, it is the high end budget for you for the used market. And these particular wheels do look utterly fantastic, if I may say so. And you've also got the um, extending doors on the i8, which is great. So that is all my supercars. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, uh, leave a like, tell, let me know how I'm doing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.